Legend of Total War here, and today we've got a rating your Doomstack video of possibly the most sent in Doomstack we've ever received on this channel. No joke, about 20 different people sent in a variation of the Bull Centaur rendered Doomstack. So what we've got here is, I think this was one of the better ones that was sent in, because I feel like this one here has been absolutely perfected, and he's gone up against a tough enemy. And even on very hard battle difficulty, it still yields a victory here. So we've got four enemies here to deal with. So he's got 17 Bull Centaur renders, all of great weapons, which I think is a good choice, but you can go with either one of the three variants, it's entirely up to you, or mix it up. The Hellforge unit upgrades, I think you went with all of the right ones, Murderous Charge, Barrier Hit Points, Vanguard Deployment, Strength from Flesh, and Blood Greed. We've got a Infernal Castle in here, which is important for extra campaign movement range. You're going to want to make sure you get as much value out of this army as possible. You've got a Demon Smith Sorcerer of Hashut, and of course you've got Astrogoth Iron Hand himself, who boosts this army to an absolutely ridiculous degree, and he's got additional physical resistance with the Oath of Contempt on top of that. So let's jump in here and see how it actually performs on the battlefield, and I think that we'll do much better than Pyrrhic Victory. Now let's jump in and see how it goes. Now, whilst it's loading up, I do want to let you know that this video here is uh, sponsored by Instant Gaming. So what I like to do with Instant Gaming, you guys know I've been sponsored by them for ages, great company, and you can find amazing deals on their website. But what I like to do is try and find amazing deals on this website for games that I truly recommend. So today I found Stellaris for 85% off. Now I'm sure most of you guys will have heard about Stellaris by this point. It's been out for a while. But just to put things in perspective, if you haven't tried out Stellaris, this is a game I absolutely swear by. I have clocked 1,152 hours on this game. And to be honest, the only reason I haven't clicked, clicked more hours on this is simply because I just spend more time playing Total Warhammer because it's my job. Otherwise, I would play a lot more Stellaris because it's probably my favorite Paradox game. So at 85% off, it's basically a steal. Uh, you can easily get 1,000, 2,000 hours out of it. So, highly recommend checking it out. There'll be a link in the description if you want to go check out uh, Instant Gaming. There's other great deals on the website if this isn't your cup of tea, but it's entirely up to you. So, thanks to uh, Instant Gaming for supporting the channel for such a long time. Okay, now, onto the battle itself. Uh, should we wait for enemy reinforcements? I mean, this army is designed for rush. This is a cavalry-based doomstack. Should we wait for the enemy reinforcements? They're going to take two minutes to get in here. I feel like this army is so strong that we can actually afford to not play optimally and it be okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to hang back. So it's not a legendary difficulty campaign, but if we have a look here, it is on very hard battle difficulty, which is the only thing that I care about here. Okay. I think it's good to have the spellcasters, but I'm primarily just going to use the Bull Centaur renders. So, some of the things that um, Astrogoth Iron Hand is doing is he provides them with 15% ward save. They also get loads of um, uh, physical resistance through the tech tree and through um, redline skills. And their overall stats are just absolutely amazing. Alright. Let's just... I'll let them come onto the battlefield. We'll go up against two full stars. Oh, they're not going to... They don't want to wait for their reinforcements. They want to come at us now. Um, okay, if that's what they want to do, fine. I was gonna, I was gonna give them that chance, you know. If they don't want to. That's up to them. We're not gonna use any army abilities at all in this battle. It's just gonna be entirely up to the bull centaurs. So the barrier takes tanks quite a bit of damage. They've also got a lot of missile resistance as well, 25%. Uh, no, I'm not even going to use Astrogoth. Just the Bull Centaur renders. They're not super fast, so the Glade Riders can catch you. Or can outrun you. But because we've got regen as well, even if they do a little bit of damage here and there, as long as we can get into melee, it's not so bad. Okay, just hang back. Still going to wait for their reinforcements, but they're coming at us straight away. It's kind of like they're asking us to go and smash them straight now. Straight away. So to put things in perspective, these guys here, without magical attacks, are doing... Oh god, like... Reduced by about 60% damage. Yeah. Yeah. 
Because they don't have that much barrier, it's only about 800. And they're barely even doing that much to it. So yeah, just waiting for them to get organized. Well, it also might have been a decent test, and I don't really expect people to do this, is go up against multiple factions so that they can actually bring all of their armies to bear at the start. Because two of their full stacks are going to be hanging back. Just because they can only bring 40 units at a time. But I feel like this is not an appropriate enemy to go up against. Got the Banner of Eternal Flame here. I don't think any of their units are going to be flame resistant. You know, being the Wood Elves. Yeah, sometimes you can manage to catch them. The Murderous Charge really helps as well. Gives us that really nice charge bonus. In terms of the speed. And you can see here, they kill them so quick. Now, if you're thinking about whether or not to go the anti-infantry variant over the anti-large variant, I would usually lean towards the anti-large variant because the, um, typically speaking, infantry are very easy to deal with in the first place, but the anti-large makes these guys way better against larger units, which, especially large single entities, which can often be a big problem, especially for the anti-infantry variant, but it's entirely up to you. You can also just go with the shield variant, which might actually be better in this battle here due to the all the missile units. Okay, so Balancer Power is actually considered even now. So I think the Order Resolver was actually being generous. And we don't really want to fight in the... Um, there we go, Perfect Viewer as well. We don't really want to fight in the forest. We will lose 20% of our melee attack. We'll still smash them, but preferably fight them out here. Although if we do fight in the trees here, a lot of their missiles will get blocked. That being said, they're barely breaking through our barrier. Now, using a cavalry-based doomstack, it can be a little bit micro-intensive, but these units are so strong that you don't really need to think about which unit to send it up against. Because the truth is, they just go up against everything. So as soon as that dragon wants to land, we'll deal with it. Until then, I can't do much about it. Here it comes. You can just throw them into melee and just leave them there as well, but since they've got such a high charge bonus, you probably should try to cycle charge where possible. You stop firing, don't help them. And <laughs> they don't need your help. Also, by pulling back every now and again, it gives you a chance to regenerate their barrier. And they've got such high mass. Monstrous infantry are a lot better than... Sorry, monstrous cavalry are a lot better than regular cavalry because they don't get stuck quite as easily. But it, they can still get stuck. Uh, I wouldn't have used the Dwellers Below against these guys here. Just It just re really wouldn't do that much damage, even if we were in a blob. Okay, most of our units have broken through their... Um, barrier. But that's okay. Pull back. Mainly just so we can get that charge bonus. Because it is pretty damn massive. And then we'll get that murderous charge going in there. And even up against Spearman here. If you ever look, they're just not doing that much. Now of course if I was smart, which I'm pretty smart, but anyway, I would use the Demon Smith in here to uh, be casting spells, or even Astrogoth himself, popping down three Winds of Magic Hellhammer. But like I said, we've already known for a long time that Astrogoth is very powerful. We're here to test out his army. Okay, pull him back again. Okay, I think yeah, we need you guys to move back a little bit. We haven't taken any casualties yet, but we are starting to take a little bit of damage. I think this would be a uh, Wood Elf endgame crisis. So they'd get all their uh, tech bonuses. Okay, send them back. Oh, jeez, left this guy over here. Oh, no, you're fine, you're fine. Just keep doing your thing. 
So the anti-infantry variants would definitely do better in this particular scenario, but still, they seem to be doing just fine. We're getting shot up over here a little bit. Let's, let's pull it back before we actually take a casualty. Still haven't taken a casualty yet. So the Chaos Dwarves obviously have a large number of viable Doom Stacks. And as for which is the strongest, it really does depend entirely on what you're going up against. But I think this army here is a lot better for the majority of the conflicts you go up against. Whereas the artillery, for example, they're just not going to be good at single entities. But that being said, most of the conflicts that you go up against aren't going to be single entity heavy. I might actually take a casualty soon if this keeps up. Just hang back. Go get your barrier. Seem to be regenerating decent rate. Fun there. Might be a good opportunity now that we've taken out most of their melee infantry, which is normally what I wouldn't do. I'd go straight for their archers. But like I said, with these tests, sometimes you want to fight them in not necessarily as a disaster battle, trying to cheese it and find the most efficient way, but just seeing if these guys can win when you aren't particularly efficient. Like I said, I'm not even using Astrogoth. Still no casualties. But I'm actually, I'd be very surprised if we walk out of this battle without any casualties. You know, couple, handful. These two units over here are definitely the biggest concern for taking a casualty. But still haven't taken any casualties yet, as far as I can see. Up against essentially unbreakable spearmen. And it is just not doing enough. They can't even get through our regen. Yeah, this one's very much at risk of taking a casualty now. So they're regenerating at a rate of about 20 hit points per second. I could just get this one at barrier back up, then we can charge in here and sort of get some free regen going. The guys in here are doing fine, this is not really enough coming at us at once. This one here regenerated. It's good. Send it back in. Come on, get your barrier up. There we go. There we go. This will just give it a bit of a grace period to get some regen up so nobody actually ends up dying. You know what? These three, just get them out of here. Oh yeah, I'm not even using Astrogoth's extra physical resistance. <laughs> like I said, not fighting this battle perfectly on purpose. Okay, we're actually almost at this one's regen cap. Yeah, they're really focusing on that one. Let's pull it out of that. Okay, I got too much of a blob here. More reinforcements are coming in. And we don't want any of our guys sitting around not in melee, just getting shot. Okay, I think we're getting fairly close to the army losses at this point. This one here is getting exhausted. I'm going to pull it out. Okay. 
Okay, that's all we can find there. We've got too many units fighting these single entities here. So these way watchers from shooting us. Man, even way watchers aren't really doing that much to us. Absolutely insane. What I could have done, if I wasn't going to use the Oath of Contempt with Astrogoth, I should have just put it on one of these guys. But it doesn't look like it's going to matter, because I reckon the army losses really isn't that far away. Almost all their reinforcements have come onto the battlefield now. So this dragon here has done, done a thousand damage, but we've just regenerated right through it. Okay, this one here has had enough. Let's pull it out. Okay, this one here is about to take a ca- Oh no, I just took a casualty! Oh, game over, guys. Skin. Took actually a few casualties. And this one here is taking casualties. Instead of its regen, just pull it out. Of course, withdrawing those two heroes probably hurt us in terms of getting an early army losses on them. Bounce of Power's actually moved a little bit towards the center. What are you doing? Just sitting around. Getting over here. Yeah, we're starting to take casualties now because our regen cap is starting to get hit. We're also fighting in the forest here, which I said I didn't really want to do, but they'll still manage. This one here actually broke. What's going on? Scary wood elves, huh? Now, here's the thing. If we had an army full of Dreadquake Mortars, we wouldn't win this battle. Or if we had... Um, well, you wouldn't use a full army of Dreadquake Mortars, that'd be silly. But yeah, during the, the fact that they're sort of rushing at us in this one, not being completely stupid, the Dreadquake Mortars wouldn't have been so good against Wood Elves because of their run. Um, they do tend to fight in looser formation, making Dreadquake Mortars harder to inflict damage. Yeah, a lot of our regen caps starting to get hit. Alright, all of their reinforcements have come in, and the bounce power is in our favor. So army losses, there it is. There it is. So we did end up taking a few casualties, but that was a monumental amount of force being thrown down us. And the order resolve didn't give us anywhere near this much of a good result. And I didn't fight this battle anywhere near as efficiently as I could have. Didn't use any of the army abilities, didn't use Astrogoth Iron Hand at all. Didn't use the other heroes. Just goes to show how powerful this army actually is. This one here must be unbreakable. Okay. So let's go through some of the things that's making this such a ridiculously powerful army. So another thing is that we could just very easily recover all of those casualties after the battle. So the fact that we took eight losses against all this means nothing. Of course, you don't have to recover. You could always just take on the labor. But yeah, it was full of anti-large, full of archers. These guys aren't carrying shields. The battle didn't take that long. You know, and I was I didn't rush at them at the start as well. We probably could have avoided some of the damage if we had done that. Cause it looks like Astrogoth might have a point into lightning strike, slowing down reinforcements. So yep. Yeah. yeah we can fully recover with that as if we took no casualties. That's not that much labor anyway. Alright, 
Can we can we just get through this turn? Without having to fight another battle. That was, that was definitely a Wood Elf Endgame Crisis. These are Grumdal. I was grateful it's not Vampire Count Endgame Crisis. It's not a, it's not a disaster campaign, don't need to send a safe file back in. So yeah, I probably got like 20 different people sending me variations of the uh, the um, Bull Centaur renders. Some people uh, mixed evenly the three different types. Some people threw in a whole bunch of heroes. Some of them didn't max it out at all. But this one here I think was um, my favorite of the 20 odd that I looked at. Alright, so looking at Astrogoth, here's all the things he does. So with his um, just regular trait, you've got... 15% extra ward save, which is a pretty large amount of ward save for just a regular trait, not anything you have to earn towards. Then over here, does he have anything unique? So you've got reduced upkeep cost for bull centaur renders and armor piercing weapon damage plus 10 for bull centaur renders. So that's a, that's a good chunk of extra weapon strength. And then of course you've got the red line. So through here, Weapon strength by additional 12% and charge bonus. Then over here, you've got physical resistance, charge bonus, and weapon strength. So they're really starting to hit quite hard at that point. Then, of course, well, we already went over the um, the Hellforge unit upgrades. But if we have a look at the other ones that they could have potentially obtained, uh, you could have gotten Hellforge. That would have allowed a Demon Smith to heal them. But they didn't need that because you've got the... Um, uh, what's that? The uh, strength from flesh there, giving them regen. Causes terror, not really essential. And devastating flanker, which that's okay, but I think you could have switched out maybe murderous charge for that one, but either one I think is fine. But I think you chose all the right ones. In terms of the tech tree, so you've got perfect vigor for bull centaur renders, rank 7 and above, melee attack for bull centaur renders, and. Yeah, you've got melee defense there for bull centaur renders as well. Oh, I think Astrogoth, the other physical resistance, yeah, was coming in from the healing salve of Valaya for physical resistance plus 10% all units in the army. So yeah, there's just a ton that you can do to make these guys super strong. There's probably no army in the game that the AI is going to send at you that you would struggle against with this. Even Rite of Primeval Glory armies would just not really be an issue. I guess one thing that you might be concerned about is if you go up against a lot of physical resistance, but typically speaking, you're not really going to go up against an AI that's going to have an entire army full of like 90% physical resistance, so uh, shouldn't really be that much of a concern. Anyway, that's the end of this one here, guys. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this uh, this doom stack. It's essentially a 10 out of 10 doom stack. It's pretty easy to use. You don't really need to micro it. You get more use out of it if you micro it, but it is very easy to use. It's Pretty cost efficient, doesn't cost that much. Uh, you don't have to use it with Astrogoth, but it's obviously best with him. And um, it's insanely powerful. Very few armies are going to even be able to do a scratch to them. And that was a very powerful army that we went up against. And anyway, that's the end of this one. Appreciate you guys. Don't forget to check out Instant Gaming, link in the description. Appreciate you guys, and we'll see you next time. Later.